Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen, Bishop Nizwan. Well, uh, Bishop Nizwan, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord has spoken with me um, yesterday in the night. The Lord did speak with me. I was seated on a chair reading the Bible. And as I sat on that chair reading the Bible, then the Lord stole me away in a sleep. And then uh, he spoke with me about what is about to befall the earth, what is going to happen to the earth. Now, I see a military aircraft, these very sophisticated strike aircraft, uh, like the F-35. Yes, I see with bombs, even the, the, the front part, the, the many bombs that are under the aircraft, because the Lord made the aircraft fly above me like this, and is headed in that direction. So uh, it's very, very sophisticated. The F-35, I see a tremendous war that is coming, and uh, I have a feeling that uh, the Iran nuclear war that I've been prophesying since the year 2005 is about to take place. Again, since September 27, 2005, from Mbeya, Tanzania, when the Lord spoke to me at Mbeya, Tanzania, about this tremendous war, the nuclear war that is going to take place, the Iran nuclear war, when, um, when there will be two missiles, that strike the nuclear facility that is at the foot of a mountain in the desert. And, and, and so, I, I, and, and since then, I think that's Natan's nuclear center, something like that. But anyway, in Iran. Now again, this past night, when I was sitting down on a seat, uh, reading the Bible, and then, uh, that time, the Lord steals me away, and he shows me these strike aircraft, the F-35, the top one, the steel fighters, the ones that can evade radar, it's flying, and as it was taking off, the Lord makes the plane take off over me like this, so I can see under the aircraft. There's so many bombs it's loaded with. So the earth is sitting right now, the brink of a major war, I'm announcing here. But I have seen a major war come to the earth. It's going to be a serious war to resolve this nuclear controversy, nuclear crisis that has been protracted over many years about Iran versus the rest. And uh, you remember in that dream of uh, September 27th, the year 2005, uh, the two, two, two millions. I think fired by aircraft or something. I don't know. Whether it looks like fired. Now I'm beginning to understand they are fired by an aircraft. Most likely not Tomahawk missiles from a cruise ship, from a, 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 from a, an aircraft carrier. It looks like they send out strike aircraft and two, two, because I see their copper, copper, the copper tails of those bombs, two of them. It's the copper tails are spinning anti-clockwise. And then they strike this nuclear facility in Iran. And the fire that explodes from there goes as far as the east can go and as far as the west is. And small, small flames that go almost up into heavens, you know, up very high into the sky. And so the reason I knew it's nuclear is because I see the small, 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 small little flames, little flames within the big, big, historic fire the earth has never seen before. And so we are sitting on the verge of a very major, major conflict. And uh, yesterday, the Lord now shows me these steel fighters, only the U.S. and Israel have this type of aircraft. And, uh, and it flies above me, and I see it headed that way. So there is going to be a serious situation come to the earth. The earth is sitting on the verge of a major meltdown, a major, major war. And remember in that war, Israel must always win. So, um, I, again, I've seen 
the strike aircraft live with bombs in that direction. So the Earth is sitting again on a major landmark that scores a very important point towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. We are all aware that nobody knows the day or the hour. And so I have always been very hesitant to locate that war on the prophetic timeline of the Lord. Because if I say it, that that war is going to take place and then the Messiah comes, then the whole earth will essentially wait for that war before it takes place in order to prepare. And I would be better off saying that that war takes place soonest. I would be very better off saying that the coming of the Messiah comes before that war. That that war takes place soonest and the Messiah comes before that war. So that people are anyhow ready, no matter the position of that war. Instead of saying, wait for that war, when it takes place, then you know the Lord comes. Because nobody knows the day or the hour where the Messiah comes. So even now, I repeat the same proclamation of the Lord, that I cannot position that war before the nations of the earth. Because I cannot tell them that, look, that war will take place when the Messiah comes. No. I want everyone and everybody to be ready for the glorious coming of the Messiah, regardless of that war. Regardless of the position of that war. Why do I say so? Because John the 15th, that tremendous conversation the Lord privileged me with in that visitation when he took me and stood me by the gate of heaven, the gate to heaven, 20 to 30 meters away, and I saw how glorious ship of Christ, they were raptured, they the beautiful holy church, the mature bride, the perfect bride, the church that has prepared, has endured, all the harassment, the blackmail, malice, and slander of the earth, and the sustained righteousness in all their doings in their hearts, and everything, and avoided all manner of sin and iniquity, I saw them enter just about two weeks or so, or two to three weeks now, it's coming to three weeks ago. This is fresh from the Lord. About three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago, this is really very hot and fresh from the Lord. Fresh from the throne of God. When he took me and he stood me about 20, 30 meters from the door of heaven, and I saw how they were entering, and the glorious steps appeared as they were stepping. They walked one step like this, and the second step, and they were inside the glory of heaven. And they, after that, the door was shut. The, the cloud came and covered them in. So, even as I talk about this war, I would like the nations of the earth to know that we are sitting on the verge of a major visitation, the coming of the Messiah. The Lord has taken me now to the door. Now the Lord has taken me to the door. I am standing at the door. I am announcing the coming of the Messiah now from the door, the door to heaven. This is where I'm standing now. However, I have also seen the military aircraft leave and there's going to be a strike. There's going to be an assault, a military assault, you know. The strike aircrafts leave. These look like the steel bombers, the, the strike aircrafts, the F-35s, those precision aircrafts that have fed rather the state-of-the-art aircrafts that can go and do some serious work. I have seen these things, and I announce them in your hearing, that when you hear these things, you may never harden your hearts. You may now prepare your hearts for the glorious coming of Messiah. What a beautiful time to live in, to have the announcement of the coming of the Messiah reach your ears while your feet are still walking on this earth, on the soil of this earth, to live to hear and to be able to make substantive real gains in preparing in righteousness and absolute holiness and see eternity. That when it's all said and done, you have a win-win. You lived on the earth, you were born again on the earth, and then you enter heaven into eternity. 
So this is a beautiful day. These are wonderful tidings of the coming of the Lord. This is great news that is reaching the four corners of the earth at this hour. At this hour, the most beautiful thing is ever for one to be born again, to be a Christian, to live as a Christian, because we are living in the hour of the church, the hour of the church. This hour begins the church. We are seeing tremendous wonders, tremendous signs. We are seeing our city on the verge of tremendous, a shocking catastrophe, tragedy of famine and drought. And we see how the Lord's rescuing hand is still land to land, bringing rain to them. People may grow, crop at least vegetable and everything. Although the land is gradually submitted fully hmm, under the authority of the Bible. But from the, the, the catastrophe you see in the other places where rain has not fallen, then you understand this was meant to be bad. This was going to be really bad. And the Lord's rescuing hand, even today as we speak today, the historic rain in Makueni, bigger than the first rain they had. In Ukambani. And so what a beautiful time to live, to be a Christian, to say, I am born again. Mimi nimeokoka. How powerful. Na ninatembea kwenye utakatifu. To say, I am born again and have deliberately and intentionally purposed and resolved to walk in holiness because I want to see eternity with God. Eternity in heaven. And the Bible says that he sent out his servant to ask those for whom the banquet was prepared. He says a master, a father, had prepared a wedding banquet for his son. Then he asked his servant to go and invite, to bring those who were invited, for whom the wedding banquet was prepared, the guests. And he says, they reached, the servant read there and told them, the fattened calves, the fattened calves have been slaughtered, fattened calves have been slaughtered. But those to whom the message was given, they were busy and deluged, deluded. They were caught up in the delusion of this world, and they missed it. And he says they don't deserve. But for you that are tuned in, you can intentionally and purposefully prepare and say, on that day you want to sit in heaven at that dinner table in the portion of the church, the glorious portion of the church, that fattened calf, that is the inheritance, the portion that God has cut out, he has cut out for the church, which you will enjoy at that dinner table. That is the portion of the church's inheritance, the eternity that is apportioned to the church, the glory apportioned her, the joy apportioned her, the perfect worship of well-being, of health that is apportioned her, and seated there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And decide. You can make that decision today. Because the Lord has continued to announce the coming of the Messiah over and over and over again. If there is any message the Lord has sent me with ever since I came, is repent. Repent and turn away from sin. Repent and return to righteousness. Uphold holiness in your heart. The Messiah is coming consistently. Every dream, every vision, every voice that speaks to me. The coming of the Messiah. One day, the words of my tongue will be fulfilled on this earth and in heaven. And that's the day I will dance before the Lord and say, I told you. Oh, how I pray and wish that you don't be there to hear me say, I told you, that you'll have been taken up. But I have seen that now the announcement is at the door. I am now standing 20 to 30 minutes to the entrance to heaven, and the humongous glory of God that's bigger than half the earth was over there. And they were entering, and the glorious steps appeared as they stepped on and entered. The announcement on the glorious coming of the Messiah is now taking place at the door to heaven. This is the time to wind up, to finish up on the things of the earth. 
to prepare and ready perpetually every hour to bear a repentant heart. Those of you from many so-called developed nations, you must make sure now that development does not block you from eternity. Watch your dressing if you are women. Watch your dressing if you are men. Watch your heart. What movies do you watch? What is your lifestyle? What do you engage in? Are you holy? Are you righteous? Is the spirit of the Lord purifying you from glory to glory? Or you are still part of the big, grand apostasy in the church? This is the hour of reckoning. The moment of truth is here. And this is a beautiful hour because you rather prepare now than to be shocked on that day when he shall say, to tell you the truth, I know ye not. Those who have ears prepare for the coming of the Lord. My King, my Lord is coming. He's coming to take a wonderful holy church, a glorious church, a beautiful church that has been faithful to him, maintained faith in Christ Jesus, has walked in faith, no matter the tribulation of this earth, but has been faithful unto righteousness, has abided herself unto holiness, has lived a separated life. May the Lord bless you. The Messiah is coming. Shalom. Shalom.